Subscribe if you like scary stories. My boyfriend and I made the thrilling decision of purchasing a house. It was located on the outskirts of the city, precisely about a 30-minute drive away. It was peaceful and distant, away from the bustle and noise of the city. But it was its proximity to another location that made it particularly intriguing. Just a mere 20 minutes further from our house, there existed an old abandoned army base. Over the years, it had become a hotspot for kids and young adults, fueled by the adrenaline of exploration. Everywhere we went, we heard tales of its eerie ambiance, making it a must-visit for someone like me, who was drawn to such mysteries. You see, this wasn't just any base. Decades ago, it served as a vital military hub. Its main headquarters was perched atop a dominating hill. Nestled below that hill, there was a cluster of homes. These homes were not for ordinary civilians, but were specially designed to accommodate the families of military personnel. Besides the homes, the base community was complete with a school, a church, a recreation hall, and a community center. The positioning of these structures added to the eeriness. Everything was in a state of abandonment, except for the homes. Those homes were repurposed and now served as low-income housing. But there was one particularly chilling detail that stood out. Each of these homes had an underground tunnel. These tunnels started from their basements and led all the way up to the main base on the hill. Although filled and sealed with cement to prevent access, the mere existence of such pathways sent shivers down one's spine. My boyfriend wasn't new to these tales. As a teenager, around the age of 14, he lived there for a short span with his family. He often narrated stories, particularly one where he and his sisters claimed to have witnessed a mysterious young girl dashing through their hallway late at night. But when investigated, the girl vanished, and all family members were accounted for, leaving behind only questions. One evening, as we were lounging around a fire pit with some friends at our house, someone brought up the idea of visiting this enigmatic base. The clock showed 11 p.m., a perfect cloak of darkness for our adventure. But we had to be cautious. There were residents at the bottom of the hill, and they didn't take kindly to trespassers. The anticipation was palpable as we clambered into our friend's truck. I was filled with a mixture of excitement and apprehension. We reached the location, and with lights off, parked discreetly at the recreation hall. As we strategized our next move, we spotted a bouncing light up the hill, intermittently visible through the trees. While the mysterious light was nerve-wracking, what followed next was even more perplexing. As we squinted into the darkness, we observed silhouettes descending the hill. Their movements were deliberate. They seemed to resemble soldiers, each appearing to have rifles. The atmosphere was thick with tension. Were these the legendary ghost soldiers? As they neared, our worst fears were realized. It wasn't rifles they carried, but baseball bats. Their faces were obscured by skeletal masks, sending all of us into a frenzy of panic. We ducked, trying to blend into the shadows of the truck. The ominous trio descended the hill, revealing their identity as they reached the road. They removed their ghastly masks and lit up cigarettes. We observed, horrified, as they made their way back to one of the homes. Questions raced through our minds. What were they doing there? What could possibly be their motive for such a disguise? We debated contacting the police but were held back by the uncertainty of what we'd witnessed. What were we to report? Speculations ran wild. Did they harm someone up there? Were they guarding a secret? We shuddered at the thought of what might have happened had our paths crossed within that desolate base. As soon as they were out of view, we fled the scene and headed home. Years have passed, and the base is no more. It was razed to the ground, although other structures remain. The homes still stand and are occupied. I did revisit the site once, hoping to find answers. Although I couldn't access the buildings, I did spot a man's shadow leaning against a wall in an inaccessible area, and I wasn't the only one who saw him. In the warm summer months of 2016, my partner Andrew and I embarked on an adventurous cross-country road trip. Our vision was clear. 
to leisurely traverse the expansive United States, resting in motels when the situation allowed. We also possessed camping equipment, prepared to use it if accommodations weren't available. Occasionally we'd recline in our vehicle for the night, but this wasn't our preference. With no concrete plan, we enjoyed the liberty to wander off the usual routes. We'd alter our path whenever something intrigued us. Armed with a reliable GPS, we were never concerned about losing our way, even when adventuring into lesser-known areas. One day, driving on a quiet highway, our gaze was captured by a seemingly deserted structure in the distance. Initially, it resembled a forgotten shed, but as we neared, additional buildings began to materialize. The sun, low in the sky, illuminated this spot. It had the aura of those eerie ghost towns often showcased in Western films. Though we weren't in the typical ghost town region, the resemblance was undeniable. Andrew, always captivated by the unknown, proposed investigating. The day was waning, but our shared sense of wonder propelled us forward. Coming closer, we realized it wasn't a full-blown town but rather a forsaken stopover. There was a dilapidated gas station, an ancient motel, and a couple of houses in the distance that seemed just as abandoned. These relics of the past stood in a state of decay, telling stories of a bygone era. Their windows were fractured, and some walls seemed to be on the verge of collapse. We cautiously disembarked and began our exploration. As the sun retired, eerie shadows stretched across the landscape, enhancing its mystique. With night encroaching and other accommodations out of reach, we resolved to camp there. The structures were in no condition to shelter us, so we sought a clearing amidst the ruins. Andrew began pitching our tent, while I vigilantly observed our eerie environment. Darkness fell swiftly. The night was so opaque that even distant highway lights were invisible. We crawled into our shelter, intending to discover more the following dawn. While Andrew, fatigued from the day's drive, instantly drifted into slumber, I remained alert, embracing the stillness. Suddenly, a distant murmur disrupted the silence. Glancing at my phone, I realized it was 2.30 a.m. Puzzled, I cautiously peered outside. To my astonishment, two indistinct figures were conversing near our vehicle. Intrigued, I observed silently. Moments later, one attempted to infiltrate our car. However, the alarm erupted, shattering the quietude. Awakened, Andrew inquired about the commotion. I hastily briefed him, but by the time we refocused, the figures had vanished. Fearing an encounter, we hastily dressed and dashed to our car. Scanning the vicinity, the intruders were nowhere in sight. After silencing the alarm, we ignited the car, leaving behind our tent in our haste. Exiting, our headlights unveiled two men ambling by the road, one brandishing a crowbar, the other armed. Their reaction was chilling. They seemed unapologetic, their intentions clear. We sped away, shaken. Our journey continued, but we prioritized security in our nightly stops. We never returned for our tent, imagining it would present an unsettling sight for the next visitor. A deserted town with a lone tent, eerily open, as if something had snatched its occupants away. Perhaps that's a tale for another time. A decade ago, as a freshman in college, I found my dwelling in the student residences. The campus itself was quite a sight to behold. An avant-garde design was evident as most of the buildings were made almost entirely of glass, stretching from floor to ceiling. Amidst this modern architecture, one anomaly stood out, an ancient, decrepit five-floor building made of red brick. Its appearance wasn't particularly pleasing, which probably was why it had been allowed to deteriorate over the years. It was encompassed by a formidable fence, seemingly sealing off its history from the rest of the world. Rumor had it that its destiny was demolition, soon to be replaced by a fresh structure in line with the campus's modern aesthetics. In fact, the entire campus was buzzing with construction noises, symbolizing a phase of rapid growth and expansion for the institution. From day one, my curiosity was inexplicably drawn towards this neglected relic. The mysterious allure of its worn walls and shattered windows beckoned. One fateful evening, with the spirit of adventure surging through me, 
I managed to rally James, my roommate, and our mutual friend Tim, to embark on an expedition into this old edifice. Our spirits were high as we neared our destination, our fears non-existent. Our conversations flowed seamlessly, filled with laughter and jibes. Our primary concern wasn't ghosts or unexpected surprises within, but the tangible risk of being discovered and subsequently penalized. Our journey took us across campus, under the watchful eyes of the occasional campus police officer. One such officer eyed us with discernible suspicion. However, our casual demeanor allowed us to pass by unquestioned. As we neared the building, we adopted a more cautious approach, keen on avoiding drawing undue attention. The decrepit building lay ahead, its perimeters protected by a glaringly orange construction fence. Resourcefully, we located a small breach in this barrier and swiftly entered the forbidden grounds. Though warning signs were plenty, cautioning against illegal entry and highlighting the associated dangers and legal repercussions, youthful audacity propelled us forward. The inside was as you'd expect, old abandoned classrooms devoid of desks or any remnants of their educational past. Only the pale glow of our phone screens illuminated our path. The ground floor, though intriguing, soon offered all its secrets. We then decided to venture upwards. The second floor was eerily reminiscent of the first, hollowed rooms and untended hallways. The initial thrill was beginning to wear off, and whispers of heading back were in the air. We almost decided against exploring further, but a sudden distant noise froze us. The soft echo of footsteps, unmistakably human. My mind raced. The initial thought was the campus police, but logic ruled it out. These footsteps resonated from above, not from the entrance. With mounting dread, we realized we weren't alone. Soon, the silhouette of a man materialized, blocking our sole known exit route. Words eluded us, the intense situation sapping away our voice. I mustered the courage to shine my phone's light onto this unexpected inhabitant. Revealed was a man, evidently older, his clothes stained with time and his face echoing a myriad of unspoken emotions. We deduced, with unnerving clarity, that he must have been making this abandoned place his refuge. The silent standoff seemed interminable until survival instincts kicked in. Choosing flight over fight, we dashed in the opposite direction, fueled by adrenaline. Buildings of such magnitude typically housed multiple exit routes. Our hopes were not misplaced as we stumbled upon an alternate staircase, our gateway to freedom. Once outside, relief flooded us as we spotted a campus security officer in the distance, thankfully far enough to not have witnessed our escapade. We chose a familiar spot just outside campus where many sought solace and solitude, to recuperate from the harrowing experience. Our secret remained with us. Reporting it would have meant confessing our own misdeeds. As days turned to months, the building continued to stand, a silent witness to that fateful night. Every glance in its direction made me ponder about its silent resident, and if he had company. It baffled me how such a place, amidst the bustling campus, could remain unchecked. But then, given our own unchecked adventure, perhaps campus security wasn't as vigilant as we believed. I currently reside in what many might consider a unique setting. It closely resembles a highway with homes lined alongside it. Pedestrian safety is of utmost concern given the lack of sidewalks. Thinking back, I wish I had advised myself of this about two years ago. On that day, I was accompanied by three friends. We named the boy Dan, while the two girls were Sarah and Hazel, respectively. The thrill of discovering hidden treasures in forests and neglected buildings was an adventure we frequently embarked upon. There was a particular deserted house located at the furthest point of my locality. It piqued our curiosity, and we unanimously decided to venture there on foot. The main road was perilous, so we opted to tread through the long grass alongside it. But this was equally challenging, leading us to walk perilously close to the edge of the busy road. Upon reaching our destination, its history unfolded. Constructed in the 1940s, an elderly man who later transitioned to a nursing facility once owned this house. This transition happened during the 80s, leaving the property untouched for decades. 
We hesitated a bit, observing the exterior. It was Dan who expressed his eagerness to explore the interior. His enthusiasm was palpable, whereas Sarah felt the weight of unease. She took a moment, seated on the aged, fungus-covered steps, reflecting on the potential risks. Squatters, perhaps even aggressive ones, could be lurking within. As Sarah pondered, Hazel tried to calm her. Meanwhile, Dan's attention was diverted to a peculiar well at the rear end of the house. The well, with its circular stone design, reminded us of eerie scenes from the horror movie, The Ring. An old piece of timber, seemingly fragile, covered its opening. In an impulsive act of audacity, Dan stomped hard on the wood. An abrupt crack echoed, and his leg plunged into the slight gap created. Pulling his leg free, he appeared surprisingly composed. The sight of jagged stones lurking beneath in the well made us realize the gravity of what could have been a dire incident. Our fascination didn't wane. Soon, various items were being dropped into the well figurines, stones, artificial floral arrangements. Our mischief satiated, we finally ventured into the house. The moment we stepped in, a pungent, unbearable stench assailed our senses. It transcended the usual mustiness of an old home. The place seemed to have suffered from some plumbing catastrophes. A slew of bizarre artifacts caught our attention. Garments stored inside a freezer, dolls eerily arranged in a fireplace, an inverted table. The overall ambiance hinted at a deranged art exhibition. As we explored further, the atmosphere grew increasingly unsettling. In one bedroom, the ceiling had collapsed. Garments marked with mysterious stains were scattered around. A sinister black substance seemed to slither across the ceiling. I was on the verge of nausea. An unmistakable chewing sound reached our ears, intensifying the creepiness. Suddenly, a swift shadow flitted across our line of sight. It was too rapid to discern, but its presence was undeniable, accompanied by a gasp and subsequent cough. Logic dictated an immediate exit, but youthful audacity held us captivated. Our bravado, however, was truly challenged when an unkempt man appeared. Dressed in a grimy lime-green shirt paired with worn-out athletic shorts, he emerged from the house. The horror truly sunk in when we noticed his arm. Flesh was missing, replaced by a raw, bleeding slab of meat. A terrifying realization dawned upon us. This might have been the source of the chewing sound. The loud shout of a familiar neighbor snapped us back to reality. Get out now! The urgency in the warning was unmistakable. We fled, the weight of our recklessness pressing down on us. Recounting this to our parents was out of the question. Their admonitions would be endless. To this day, the mysteries of that house remain unresolved. The questions linger. Who was that man? What might have occurred if he had discovered us sooner?